Hi there. Thank you for clicking on this video. I always find this such an interesting subject regarding aerial roots. Should they be buried? Shouldn't they be buried if they're growing as aerial roots? They should then be maintained as aerial roots for future reference if there is a repot. And um, I do pot up aerial roots, but I have to fulfill a certain criteria in order to be comfortable in doing so. I have a dog right next to me. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do this video justice because I find it an important topic. And if I get questions about my potting up aerial roots in future videos, I would like to use this video particular as a reference. Sorry about that jiggle. And uh, I don't know the science behind why it happens when it happens. And we're staring at my Crestwood Tomorrow Star. I really don't understand all that. I'm sorry, I'm not that versatile in all what goes on in a plant. I try to grow them to the best of my ability. But when I see this happening, watch, watch this root right here. It has a growing tip. And you can see how the back part is starting to get like strings, marks. That is the water touching the root, obviously. But that is also new to me since this root has started growing. Before it wasn't absorbing or taking up any water at all. So I'm just going to reposition myself so I don't get too jiggly here. Just one moment. And I want to show you the difference of what is happening with that root there, as opposed to what is happening at the tip. Sometimes their new roots will not absorb any water. But this has only just happened in the last five weeks or so since the root tip started growing. That means there's a chemistry happening here in this root that would permit me to put it into the pot. Because as it's changing its properties during the growth phase of, a, of the root, the properties of that old part of the root also change and can adapt to be inside a pot, even if it was aerial to begin with. Let me try and get a little bit more closer with another example I want to show you, especially on this orchid that I've noticed. Sorry, I'm a bit out of breath, but it's hard for me to be on crouch position. All right. I really want to do this video justice, again, just by showing examples not knowing the science behind it, but do you see that root behind that's pointing away from us with a growing root tip? And look at the green part behind it. That is the old aerial root that is now absorbing water and it's changing its properties and the way it grows because of its active growing tip. Same example, if I were to put that one into a pot even though it was aerial before, it would survive. Let me just spray a little bit more. All the ones you see now that are going brown, now there are no growing root tips. So I spray quite a bit here to get them nice and saturated. But you can see how they are not changing. They're just changing color, but there are no striations for lack of a better word, than on this route. They do change color, they will absorb water, but it's not the same characteristics as with a root that has a growing tip. So these aerial roots, in my opinion, should never go into a pot as part of a transition. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, but I always get to these and break them first things in the morning and then, you know, I'm not ready to film yet. But today I decided I've got to grab the camera before my day starts and at least document this. So this is why I believe that no matter what orchid has a growing root tip and it was aerial, by the time it starts to grow, even the last part or the oldest part of a root that was aerial with a growing root tip will survive if potted up 
Let me show you an example on Holcoop Blossom Kimberlianum. And forgive me because the gardener is doing his work as well on the opposite side of the hedge. I have to do this now. Otherwise, I'm going to miss the mark with trying to show it to you. Holcoop Blossom Kimberlianum has a root tip growing on this one. This was a previous aerial root, another root tip there. And then we have some that have not started to grow new roots, but they've been aerial for a long time. Here's another growing root tip. So let's have a look what happens now. The difference between something that is an old aerial root that is not growing a root tip and a really long previous aerial root that is growing a root tip. So let's see how we can see the difference here. We have everything taking on water, but look at the striations there. Look at what's happening to this root that has a root tip. You see how pink it's getting? This is a much more obvious example than possibly the crestwood is, but you can see how there's something different about the old aerial roots that are actually in active growth now, as opposed to the aerial roots, like this one here in the center of the screen, that is not in active growth, and it still keeps the appearance of being woody. I hope that I'm showing you something that I've noticed, even here, that I don't have any root tips and it just remains woody. It will absorb, but we don't have these striations coming. Okay, let's look at another example. The residue spray from my Kimberlianum here to my right, right here is Kimberlianum, has landed on the aerial root of my Plectral Minthos caudatus sticking out. It is an active growth. That is residual spray. And that is an older aerial root that has extended and started to grow. Look at that. The striations are obvious simply because of the residual spray that I gave it. If I wanted to, I could now pot this one up into a pot and it would survive. Again, I cannot explain why this happens. I am not a botanist in that sense, but there is a difference. And I am looking for those differences when I want to pot up an aerial root. So let's go and check out a fowl example. I'm so sorry, just as I was trying to make a point, right on the other side of the hedge, the gardener starts. I really, really hope that at least the images show what I'm trying to get at, even if my words were drowned out by the noise of the machinery. Let's look at this fowl here. It's a little cakey. And look at all these aerial roots coming out. Now, I'm not going to consider this one a candidate because it has a kink in it, even though it has a growing tip. I do want to repot this one, and I want the roots to be in the pot. But I want to show you what's going on here right now. You see how these aerial roots are rejecting the water. It takes a lot longer for them to absorb any water. But if you keep going, and you stay persistent, you will see how they are starting to get striations as well. I hope the camera is picking that up. There. Takes a lot longer. The Angraecums are a great example because they, they show results really fast. But look at the, what's going on when it gets residual water as well. Can you see those striations? That is the root changing its makeup or whatever is going on in that root. I could bury this root in a pot and it should be okay. If it's got a kink in it, I'm not entirely 100% sure, but why not? Look, it's doing the same thing. So it's a question of watching what the root does when you spray it. If it is ready, 
to be able to be potted up. And that is when you see me potting up aerial roots, this is part and parcel of what I've already done weeks prior to see if we're good to go. This is my signal that it would be okay to now pot these roots up into a pot and they wouldn't fail. A couple of months ago, this would not have been possible. This would not have happened. They were not in active growth. Now they are. And the whole characteristic of the root changes. Let's see if it does it on the banda. Just for giggles, let's have a look. Remember my sad banda that had well water and everything on it and the roots were failing? Well, it's only been flushed with plain RO water and only at night in the dark am I fertilizing it when it is nighttime because the climate is now warm enough. I can keep them wet at night. But look, the banda will also show striations in the root as it grows actively. Can you see that? These. And now look at a root that isn't growing actively. It's a solid saturation. It's different. There are no striations. Don't confuse striations that I'm talking about with vellum that hasn't been watered through yet. Like here, this is vellum that isn't wet enough yet. This is a wet enough root, but it's solid. As opposed to this root that has these darker markings. And if I wanted to, I would be able to pot this root up and it would survive. And not just the root tip, the whole root. I find there's something I wanted to show. I'm not sure if I'm explaining myself properly. We're back at Kimbilianum. This is something I wanted to show every morning. I'm like, oh, grab the camera. And every morning I'm, oh, I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> so, but this is the example that I wanted to get out and show what you need to be looking for if you would pot up aerial roots. This is again, we've just watered it. And what I just showed you on the Vander roots with the one that is not growing actively, and I said that white part was velamen, not saturated. But in this case now, what we're seeing most of is the root actively growing and the dark part is saturated as opposed to what we saw with the Vanda. This white velamen is not the same as an old root on a Vanda that hasn't been saturated. If you remember the footage before, the dark striations came before the white striations of the velamen. Gosh, I hope I'm making sense. Let me know in the comments below if I am making sense. Let's go to the Angraecum again and have a look-see. Plectromenthos caudatus. This doesn't mean the root is not fully saturated. This is the different characteristic now as opposed to what it was prior to coming into active growth. And the same here with the Angraecum crestwood, or any Angraecum for that matter. These roots down here are saturated, but they're not actively growing. And you can see the difference between the two. At least I hope you can. But yeah, that's sort of my observation. I don't know if this is of any help to anybody, but I have always gone under this premise that if I'm going to bury aerial roots, I need to see old roots becoming active again and then see the change of development, how it responds to water. And after that, we're good to go. Let me know, please, in the comments below. If I just made complete hack of what I was trying to explain. 
and I would definitely be happy to elaborate further. Thank you so much for putting up with what I was trying to show and if it just went into circles. Your patience is very much appreciated. But look what I just saw down there. We have an active root tip on the Plectromanthus caudatus on a very old root, but look at the change. You can see the dark striations. Yeah, I hope <laughs> I did this subject justice. If not, let me know and I will try and do a more structured 2.0. In the meantime, I hope this was helpful, if nothing else, entertaining, listening to me gasp while being in a crouched position. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe and take care. Thank you for your time. Bye.